Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm taking you through a new part of our series, an introduction to annuities. And this is for students who clearly understand simple and compound interest. So if that's not you, you need to go back and watch the previous videos. This is aimed at our students in senior mathematics. So firstly, in this video, we're going to talk about what an annuity is, how it works, and do some worked examples. We're going to build on this video with some future videos looking at some more complex situations. So the first thing we're going to ask ourselves is what is an annuity? It's a special type of investment, okay, and it uses compound interest. So the very first question you should ask yourself with any kind of question with an investment or a loan is, is it using simple interest or is it using compound interest? Now, the minute you look at simple interest, you're not even going to think about annuities at all. It's for compound interest situations only and very special situations. There's situations where there is an equal regular payment at the same intervals. So it could be a payment going into or out of the investment of a thousand dollars every week or a thousand dollars every month or a thousand dollars every year. It's the same amount of money. It's happening at these regular intervals every single time. And we calculate interest and add it to the investment at the end of each period. So that means it's not being calculated throughout the month, it's calculated at the end of the month or at the end of the week. Now this might not make a lot of sense just yet until you see some examples, but going back to that very first question we ask ourselves, is it simple or compound interest? Simple interest, forget about it with annuities. Compounded interest, the next question you ask yourselves, is there a regular payment? And if the answer is no, it's just a lump of money sitting in the, in the bank or a lump of money that's been borrowed and nothing changes to it except interest being added or taken away. Well, in that case, it's not an annuity. So an annuity must have this component of a regular payment and it must have a component of compound interest. So they're the two key features. Now there's two types of annuities. The first type is something called superannuation and in most countries, um, these come under different names. So in Australia, it's called superannuation. Other countries might call it a pension plan um, or something else or a, a retirement plan. But basically, the idea of superannuation is that we are saving towards a future goal. We're making payments into the investment on a regular basis adding to that investment, letting it grow, because we have this goal in the future, usually of retirement. Okay, so that's the first type of annuity. The second type is a pension type. So we've already saved, we've already completed our investment, we're now living off that investment, and we're retiring, and we're taking those payments out of the investment. So we can think of our plan towards and beyond retirement it takes sometimes two forms. Firstly, we put in, we save, we save, we save for a long time, 40 years. Then we get this big chunk of money and then we withdraw, with withdraw, with withdraw. Okay, so we could actually have an annuity that changes its nature throughout our lifetime. Firstly, we're putting in, putting in, putting in, and then we're living off it and taking away from that investment. So some questions that are simple familiar style questions will be fairly straightforward. It'll be either just putting in or just taking out. The complexity comes when we combine the different types of annuities together. In this video, we're really just focusing on the basics and the introduction to an annuity. So don't panic too much. We'll get into the complex stuff in the future videos. Okay, so firstly, how does an annuity work? Well, we've talked about money could go in, money could come out. In our first example, we're going to look at a very short time frame of four years. And what we're seeing is that our first payment goes in sometime during that first year. It could go in at the beginning of the first year, it could go halfway, it could go even at the end. But what happens is that payment doesn't actually start attracting compound interest until the end of the first year, which basically means that the first payment, even though it's gone in a new one, it's only going to attract three years of compound interest. Bit rough, isn't it? Payment two goes in sometime during that second year. It's going to attract two years of compound interest. You guessed it, payment three is going in in that third year and it's going to attract one year of compound interest. And that final payment is going in sometime in the year. It's treated as it goes in on the very last day, so it does not get compounded. So we can see that over the life of this four year annuity, we've had four equal payments going in at equal intervals sometime during a year. At the end of the year, that's when we calculate that interest. It starts at the end of that period and 
it's one less period. So if it was a 20 year annuity, you'd be getting 19 years of compound interest. If it was a 50 year annuity, you'd be getting 49 years worth of compound interest. Now, the way we work out how much is in the account at the end, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compound each of those payments using the, the compound interest formula. So you can treat each of those payments separately and then add them together. So it'll be the first payment to the power of three, three years of compound interest, second payment to the power of two, third payment to the power of one, fourth payment is just the payment, no compound interest at all, and then add the four payments together with the interest that they've attracted. Now that might sound still a little bit complicated. It's always a good idea to show it with an example. So let's do that. Let's calculate that future value of an annuity where $3,000 is going in every year for four years at 2.2% per annum. Okay, so we're gonna use that simple structure that we've talked about on the previous slide to demonstrate. So in our first year, we're gonna apply the compound interest formula and we're going to raise it to the power of three. You'll notice that I've changed the interest rate to 0.022. We're using a per annum rate, compounding once per year. And we're gonna end up with $3,202.39 at the end of the, the entire investment, compounded of three years. Same thing happens to payment two, except this time it's a power of two. And then to payment three, we're gonna have the same thing happen, except now we've got a power of one, and that fourth payment does not get compounded, so we're just adding the 3,000 on. So now we take the amount of payment one after the full four years, the payment two after the four years, and payment three after the four years, and we're adding that to that final payment of $3,000. We're gonna end up with a future value of $12,401.84. Now let's just backtrack a little bit. You might be wondering, why doesn't it get compounded from the day that it gets put in? Um, well, typically what happens is when you're saving for superannuation, it comes out of your salary. So basically your employer is taking it out of your salary and they are putting it in at the time that's convenient to them. Typically, most employers have to do it once every um, quarter within a year, every three months. So it won't actually start compounding until the end of that period when your employer puts it in, even though you've earned three months worth of, com of of salary during that time and three months worth of superannuation, your employer will hold it, they'll put it in your bank account at the end of the period. So that's why it won't start attracting interest until the end of the period. So that's a typical example. Obviously in real life though too, things are obviously a lot more complicated because um, things do start attracting interest from the minute they sit in an account. It depends on the terms and conditions of the actual investment that you have. That's why it's a good idea to read the fine print. But for the sake of our syllabus, we're focusing on it's at the end of the period. Okay, so we found the future value. It's $12,401.84. Okay, the next part to this question is determine the interest earned on this investment. Now you can see after four years, we have $12,401.84. However, you need to think about this logically. How much did we put into the investment? We put four payments of $3,000 in. We've put $12,000 in altogether. So um, the difference between what we, we've put into the investment, those four payments of $3,000, and the difference between that and what we have at the very end, that's interest. Okay, so these four payments is kind of like principal, and then we've put that um, the extra value that we've got there is the interest that we've earned. So 12,401 take away 12,000 gives us $401.84 interest over the four years. Okay, how much more would have been invested, would have been earned if we just put that $12,000 right in the bank at the beginning? So you can see here, if we treat that investment as an annuity with these four regular payments, we end up with 12,401. If we just put 12,000 in and left it there for four years, we're just gonna apply that compound interest formula. And in this time, we're gonna raise the full 12,000 to the power of four. And we end up with $13,091. The difference in interest is going to be $689.52. Now you might be wondering to yourself, well, why wouldn't I just put the $12,000 in at the beginning and leave it there for four years? Why would I bother having an annuity? Why would I make these regular payments if I'm gonna end up with $600 less interest at the end of four years? 
Well, the reason is, is that not everybody has $12,000 to invest at the beginning of a four year period. Most of us need to save and then add to our investment. And typically with something like superannuation, we want to end up with something like a million or two million million dollars to retire on. Very few of us actually have half a million dollars when we're 20 years old to put in the bank and just leave it there for 40 years. That's why we put in small amounts every single week. The power of compound interest causes that investment to grow and grow and grow. So that's why we have annuities because not everybody can save a massive chunk of money and just leave it there for 40 years. Whereas we can save little bits at a time. So you can see though, that if you were to put the whole money in at the beginning, it definitely is a better option than an annuity. Annuity is going to earn us less interest. And the reason for that is, is because we've got um, pay a payment out of the four that didn't get any compound interest at all. And all of those payments, not all of them were attracting the full four years. So investing upfront is definitely an advantage if you can afford to do it. Well, that's all we have time for in today's video, and I certainly hope it was a good taster for what's to come. We're going to look in our next video at a recurrence relation for annuities. Now, and you might also be thinking, if I had to invest my money for 40 or 50 years, I don't want to have to apply that compound interest formula 40 or 50 times. That would be kind of crazy. So we're actually going to look at a formula for annuities that gets us there in a really quick period of time. So that's the two videos we've got coming up definitely worth watching. Now, if you found this video helpful today, why not consider telling us? We love to hear your positive feedback in the comments. And also you could tell a teacher or tell a friend or a family member that you found a particular video series called McClutchy Mass helpful. They might find it helpful too, and they might love you for it. You never know. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Now, I often get asked, what happens with questions? Should I put my questions in the comments? And the answer is probably no. It's kind of hard to deal with complex questions with a limited number of characters and in a short space. It's definitely much easier for me to deal with those via the email. So you can reach me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. You can also message on direct messenger on Facebook and Instagram. Although I do have to sort of put one little disclaimer there. Um, sometimes I don't get the actual notifications from Facebook or, me or Instagram in a timely fashion. And um, it's some sort of a glitch with it. Maybe it's just because I'm a bit of a boomer and can't work the technology out. So I think the best place for you to contact me is probably on the email. I'm pretty quick at responding to those emails not so quick at responding on Facebook or Instagram. However, Facebook and Instagram are a great place for you to stay in touch with what's happening on the channel and to hear all of our news, tips, tricks, etc. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass and I really appreciate the time you've taken today to learn a little bit more about annuities. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.